UK Sports and the PGA Tour are delighted to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Players' Championship is about to begin. Pleased you could join us for this first round action. Hello, I'm Luke Elvey alongside 2002 PGA Championship winner Rich Beam, who's in the booth. And it's a hello to Henny Koyak down on the course following our featured group. Hi Luke, I'm very much looking forward to bringing you the action from the golf course for this week's featured group. Now there is a sense of maybe fear, heightened competition this week, as this player has said that they're starting up a rivalry with their playing partner. Yeah, so this week their goal is to beat John Rahm. Henny, that is by no means an easy feat. Uh, no, I, if John Rahm is fired up, sparks could fly, you want to be out of the way, and he's just going to go straight through like a Spanish bull. <laughs> yes, he, he's fire and brimstone, isn't he, John Rahm? All the Americans couldn't beat him in a Ryder Cup. This player, well, it's an ambitious rivalry to say the least. And what are we looking at here, Henny? Yeah, I think he's got around 135. Chosen the pitching wedge here. A wonderful shot and a chance for birdie here on the first. This putt right on 12 feet to the hole. Ooh, right by the hole. An opportunity to make a par here. In the end, that will be a disappointing par after such a great approach shot. Heading to the next hole, and this player is currently in a share of the lead with Tony Finau. The first of our birdie opportunities comes second, par five. Driver not necessarily required here because you have to shape your tee shot from right to left, and if you're a right-handed golfer, that's not the easiest thing to do. So lefties have a better opportunity, I think, of finding this fairway than most with driver. From there, a second shot over a long bunker to a green that's very narrow, dotted by pot bunkers. Truly is one of the coolest par fives on this layout. This one looks to be headed towards the fairway. Going for this green in two, Rich, it's an exciting but daunting task. The green is minuscule from back in the fairway. You know that you have a little bit room over to the left, but you're going to fall off into a low area. And if you miss it out to the right, you're going to find a very deep bunker on the right-hand side of the green. There's really no great miss around here, but if you're going to go for it, you have to know that your short game is going to bail you out no matter where you miss it. Not a bad approach. He'll be putted. Putting for an eagle. Oh, gee, that line was looking good, wasn't it? This putt of about seven feet to the hole. He's staring down a birdie putt here. I like the look of this. Oh, how about that one? Currently one under for the event. Let's take a look at the par three third. Straight away mid iron to short iron shot. Such a cool little par three. Love this green. There's a low section in the front and a high section in the back. And anytime they put the pin all the way in the back section of this green, well, I tell you what, good luck on you. If you miss this green long and or left, that bunker sits some five feet below the surface of the green. Yeah, that one's looking good. John Rahm watched that one all the way. Great approach shot. This player is definitely upping the pressure in this rivalry. Here's Tiger Woods. How close was that to going in the hole? Great shot. Okay, time to return to the action. 
Oh, this will be good for the momentum. Let's make this birdie putt. Ouch, that hurts. Three feet to go here to the hole. Our work here is done. Let's head to the next hole. He's currently in a share of top spot. Well, the fourth is another great example that it doesn't need to be a long par four to be a testing one. This fourth can be menacing, can't it? Just a small little twisty par four. Just going to take out a fairway wood, find the fairway, and from there you're going to have a small second shot, probably a wedge. Three distinct sections to this green, the front, the right, and the back left, and all of them have their difficulties when hitting your approach shot into them. However, in my mind's eye, if you find the fairway, you should have a decent look for birdie. Yep, give yourself a pat on the back. Trying to get to two under with this putt. Rolling end over end. This putt's looking great. This is a par putt. And down it goes. Let's head to the next. We'll now move over to John Rahm. He's two strokes behind his rival this week. Oh, what a great stroke. Never mind. Go and tap it in. And now we can take a look at how that play affects the leaderboard. The leader now has a one-stroke advantage. All right, Rich, the par four fifth. A strong hole this one, isn't it? Huge mounding down the left-hand side that you want to avoid at all costs. The bunker down the right-hand side, to be fair, is not that bad. But a little further right of that, though, that's the water. You want no part of it. Second shot is downhill to a green. To be fair, that's mostly flat. Runs from back left to front right, but one of the more benign greens on this layout. This one from about 160 yards out. He leads the field by a stroke. Yeah, good swing. This one's heading up onto the green for sure. That's a super shot. That's another green in regulation. I tell you, you just dream about days like today. Greens in regulation, spot on all day. Awesome. Well played. Putting early on has been less than stellar, but that one, that's more like it. Leading by a shot after that hole. The tee shot at the par 4 6 has changed a lot now that that tree's been taken out of the way, Rich. But uh, what do you think of this short par 4? I missed the tree. I thought that was a really cool feature of this hole. You had to flight it underneath the tree back in the day to find the fairway. The bunker down the left-hand side has been expanded quite a bit as the lake on the left-hand side has been added as well. The front part of this green is protected by tall palm trees that will certainly make you think on your second shots. This is a wonderful little par four. Well, this one's going right at the flag. Mm, that's right out of the copy books. Exquisite. Made birdie on the last, looking for a second in a row here. And that putt will drop, and he'll extend his lead. And that will take him to three under. John, give us an update. What's shaking? Hey guys, we are checking in with Lydia Ko as she gets set for her next shot here on the 10th. This one's about 110 yards away.
This one is chewing fiber. Oh, don't tell me. Did she hold that? Oh, here she goes, marching up the leaderboard. Our leader is enjoying a three-stroke advantage. As we go from a wonderful little par four, we go to a challenging, longer par four, the seven. And as you can see, there's a long fairway bunker down the left-hand side that makes you believe there's more room left than you actually have. It's just not there. Players should be looking a little bit further right. If you find the fairway, your second shot should be straightforward. In fact, Luke, I made a two here one time, so that shows you how simple this hole can be. This one looks to be heading for the sanctuary of the fairway. This shot coming from around the 150-yard marker. Currently leading by a three. Going with the nine iron, I think. That might be one club too many. Oh, my. That one had eyes for the flag the whole way. Great shot into the seventh and a chance for birdie. Five feet coming up to the cup. This looks like it's got the speed and the line. Nice one. Fourth birdie of the day. And with that, he'll move to four under par. Let's go to John Rahm. He's going to want to improve on that current fifth spot. Let's catch up with John Rahm. Oh, I thought that one was going in. Uh, I like that. Always good when you've got hands like that around the green. You better believe it is great stuff to watch. Our current leader is enjoying a six-stroke advantage. The eighth hole, a long par three, stretching 240 yards at its maximum. It's no sleeper, that's for sure. I don't find anything sleepy about this hole. The front of this green is so narrow. There's no place to land it, especially when they put the flag stick there. This hole will grab your attention as it should because it's a long iron to a sliver of an opening. Even when they put the pin on the right-hand side, you want no part of it. The center of the green all day long here. Going with a three wood here. This one needs to kick left and kick left hard. Not a bad approach, that one. Not quite inside the birdie range, but you never know. Hole a long one. Still counts. Never seen a scorecard that doesn't look good with a two on it. Oh, just missed. That's disappointing. Putting for par. This one started out on a good line. Leading by a whopping seven shots after that one. The final hole on the opening nine at TPC Sawgrass's stadium course, Rich, is a clever three-shotter. Par five, 583 yards from the back. Most players will play this as a three-shotter. Just find the fairway out to the left. Second shot out to the right. Sets up a very simple third shot to a very narrow green. Miss it right or left. Good luck getting it up and down. Nicely done. That's a good looking shot there. Getting ready to play their third. Looks like a pretty straightforward five footer to me. Oh, nice looking putt. Mark it down. That's birdie number five. And with that, he'll move to five under par. 
We'll now move over to John Rahm. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? That was a gallant attempt. That'll sting a bit. And after that effort, this is how the field is shaping up. Well, Rich, this player is nine holes into this event. How would you rate their performance in this rivalry that they've struck up with their playing partner? Well, they are doing better than their rivals, so that's good news. But there still is lots of golf to play. Should provide us for an entertaining week, that's for sure. From around 120 yards here. That was special. A chance to move to six under the card with this putt. This for a birdie birdie run. This is a good chance. And another one goes. And with it, an increase of his lead. Back-to-back -back birdies move in the right direction there, Luke. Leading by a phenomenal 12 strokes after that one. Well, that really puts our leader way out in front of the pack now. And it's only the first round. There's some birdie holes out on this course. And the 11th is certainly one of those. But uh, there are some troublesome spots if you get out of play. There definitely is trouble, but the thing I love about this hole the most, Luke, is that there's so many different ways to play it. Most players will take driver off the tee, but from there, now it's anybody's ball game. You don't have to go for the green on the second shot. You can lay it up over the left. You can lay it up over to the right. You can lay it up long left. There's so many different ways of attacking this hole. Each individual is going to do it differently. I love the second shot on this hole. And here we are with the third shot. Ooh, that almost went down. Oh, that was tidy. That should ensure the up and down. Judging it beautifully. Oh, what a round this is. Seven birdies today. And that will take him to seven under. Let's go to John Rahm. Coming off a bogey on the last hole. Yeah, that one will play. Well, that's got to have some impact on the scoreboard. Let's take a look. The tee shot is all that matters on the short par 4 12th. Most players can reach the green. It's just the decision whether the player goes for it or not. They can, but they better be aware that there's a lot of danger up there. Water left obviously is no good, but even bailing out to the right in those dunes, in the mounds, the little pot bunkers on top of those mounds, well, forget about it. That's not a good space either, especially since the green does run pretty hard from right to left. If you want to take this hole on with driver and expecting to make three, well, you need to realize that a five and a six could be easily made as well. They're not a bad shot, that one. And he's down there. You got a read? Has to put this one downhill. Oh, they're going to walk this one in. Yeah, that looked to be a bit of a misread. Downhill putt, and sometimes you think it's going to run out more than it does. Just couldn't quite figure it out this time. Currently seven under for the round.
Well, as you start to head for home here at TPC Sawgrass, you're blessed with this wonderful par 313. And this is a really cool par three. You've got three distinct areas on the green, front right, all the way on the left-hand side, and the back right. Wherever they put the pin is gonna dictate what shot shape you wanna have into that green. I think it's a really cool design because it requires you to think about how you want the golf ball to land on the green and the way you want it to bounce. I think Pete Dye did a great job in designing this green. Yeah, that putt looked pushed. Putting for a par now. Oh, so close. And this one will be for Bogey. We'll now move over to John Rahm. Yeah, he just made Bogey on that last one. John Rahm getting ready for his next shot. Oh. Wow. Oh, stop it. What a way to make your par. And this is why you've got to keep your foot on the gas at all times. These guys and girls are good. There's a few birdie opportunities out of the gate here on the second nine at TPC Sawgrass, but it really starts to toughen up down the stretch, starting here with a difficult par 4 14. Difficult tee shot on this playing some 481 yards from the tip. You find the fairway, and you've got a decent chance of finding the green with your second shot. But if you're out of position anywhere on this hole, your number will go up exponentially. Oh, golf clap. That's a beauty. And Henny, what's he looking at here? This whole location for him, well, it's about 185 yards out. Looks to be going with the six iron. This one heading towards the green. A wonderful shot into 14. It sets up another look at birdie. This putt to get to seven under the card. What a great opportunity here for a look at a birdie. Just didn't drop. Yeah, it's just about three feet away. And as they leave that hole, Rich, you'd imagine a little bit frustrated after such a great shot in. And maintaining top spot on the leaderboard after that. The par 4 15th again requires another strong tee shot because there's some trees in the way, Rich. Players do hit through a shoot off this tee shot, which makes it a little bit simpler, I believe, for the players. Bunker down the right-hand side is no good because you'll have trees blocking you out with your second shot. If you miss it left into the pine straw, now you've got some trees blocking you out there, so finding the fairway is imperative. This green is no fun. You find the center of the green and you might be able to putt every single day, but in all reality, you have to find the correct section in order to give yourself the best look at making a putt. Oh, that's a great approach shot. Nearly doesn't get any better than that. Amazing shot. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? Setting up this putt 11 feet from the cup. Hey, nice looking line. Oh, that's frustrating. Oh, I don't mind this par putt. Oh, that's got to be frustrating. Hit such a great approach shot in, but wasn't able to convert. Let's go to John Rahm. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. All right, you'll make it the next time. And after that effort, this is how the leaderboard looks. As we head to the 16th tee, the famous par five reach the start of the gauntlet. Ideally, players want to take their tee shots from right to left, start off that fairway bunker and move it left back in the fairway. Anything down the left-hand side can get caught up into those trees and really cause players issues with their layup. You find the fairway, now you have a massive decision to make. Go for it or bail out to the left, thinking that's the safe play. It really is not. 
you have to be brave and try and find this green with your second shot. If not, it could come up and bite you. And he's hold it. What a shot. Can you believe this? This is right out of fantasy land. Holding out from that distance. What a shot. We'll now move over to John Rahm. He's just coming off a drop shot on that last hole. Gee, that'll keep the momentum rolling, Rich. Needed it. Needed that in a big way, chipping in for the par. All right, Rich, you've stood there. You've hit the shot. Take us through the par 317. When you play here in a practice round, it looks like you could just throw it on there. But when you're in a tournament round, it doesn't even look like it exists. It, the hole changes so much when the tournament starts. That's what I love about it. You just add 35,000 people who are having some fun and ready to heckle you. If you knock it in the water, eh, good luck. Enjoy.
Going with the pitching wedge here. This one is right down the pipe. Oh, what a wonderful shot into the 17th. It sets up another putt inside birdie range. And they'll tap this in for birdie. Let's go to John Rahm. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Wow, what a shot from there. Take your hat off to them. And after that effort, let's take a look at how it stands. Let's head to the finishing hole, this wonderful par 4 18th. Wonderful only if you're a spectator. It's wonderful if you're not playing it for a lot of cash. It's just one of the most difficult, visually intimidating holes I think you'll ever face in your life. Somehow, try and hit it down the right-hand side of the fairway, keep it out of the rough, and from there, hit it out to the right-hand side of the green. Somehow, also keeping it out of the rough or that pot bunker short right. Listen, you'd be happy to make five here, that's for sure. Fours are magnificent. Threes are unicorns. They really don't happen that much. It is such a difficult, demanding finishing hole. Probably one of the toughest in championship golf. They're lining up the birdie putt here. That'll be all she wrote today. Well played. And Rich, as this round comes to an end, this pro is absolutely dominating the field. And it's their tournament to lose tomorrow, Luke. All eyes will be focused solely on that player. Well, that was a thrilling day. And on behalf of myself, Luke Elby, Rich Beam, and all the hardworking folks at 2K Sports, thanks for your company. We look forward to the next time you join us.